Greetings and welcome back to Factorio. I'm Catherine of Sky and I am starting a brand new series. Um, this one is going to be entry level to Megabase. And I'm hoping to combine concepts from a couple of my series. I got so much response from the um, sort of beginner factorial levels that I really wanted to start a new game where I explained things a lot more and why we do the things we do, you know, how to make belt, belt balancers, why we use them, where we use them, how to feed the main bus, all kinds of things like this that I see, I see questions on the forums all the time. And so I'm hoping to start out that way, talk about shortcut keys, all this kind of stuff. Um, and then at the very end, we're going to transition this base into a mega base and we're going to have a lot of train networks going on, we're going to have all the things. Um, I'm going to start out, uh, let's start off with the map settings first. We're going to have, uh, this is basically a modified rail world settings, um, very low frequency, size very big, and richness very good. Now I was considering starting with default, but then I thought, oh my god, if we get to mega base size, it is going to be a severe pain in the socks to get resources. So I'm going to use mega base settings for ore. Yes, there are biters. Um, if they become too annoying at endgame, I'm just going to turn them off. But for newbies to the game, I want to say, okay, this is how you defend yourself from biters. First, you need to make gun turrets, this kind of thing. So that's why the biters are on. Yet the starting area is very big. So hopefully we won't be bothered too early in the game with them. Here are the advanced settings if you want to take a look. Um, we have uh, pollution is enabled, that's to allow the biters to attack us, and of course we can always turn off these things later if we are losing FPS or something like that. Um, recipe, recipe difficulty is going to be normal, same with tech, that, that doesn't matter as we all know. Um, tech price multiplier is one, Basically, this is just going to be if you started the game from now. So um, it's I think it's a good enemy expansion. I'm turning that off because I don't want to have to kill biter nests more than once in the same area. So that's going to be there. All right, let's generate ourselves a map. Alrighty, the very first map I clicked on, I actually stopped the recording, I clicked generate, and here it is. This actually looks like a really decent map. Um, it's It looks kind of fun. We got a lot of coal, got um, two patches of copper, uh, one and a bit of iron. Oh, what is up with these, like, very strange... Uh, you know what? I didn't change the water settings. This must be what this is. You know, that's okay because I like water, like maps with a lot of water, but I always play them. So maybe we're going to have one with a little bit less water this time. So um, yeah, this is looking pretty good. And it also jives with, I want to try a different way of doing the bus this time. Um, we're going to try an experiment, but I think this is a really nice spot to start. Let's, oh my God, we have millions of trees to clear. Let's uh, start with that process right now. Let's go to this um, iron iron patch down here, and we'll also tap this coal uh, so that we can get things going a little bit faster. Here we go. Here, coal. Here, take some of that, and I want to make the other bits of wood into a box for now. There you go. Here, if you can shove it. Oops, let's press Alt to turn on detailed view. You can, if you press Alt, you can see the output arrows and the outputs of the miner are on the arrow. You can also rotate these things around with R, pressing R, um, and that's how you would do that. I like to start off with, um, well, miners, of course. We're gonna put about eight miners on the iron and we're gonna put um, a few on the coal as well. Right, so let's go ahead and grab this. I press control click to take everything out of the box. You can also do, like if I put, um, well, I can do, when, when, well, okay, I, I oh goodness me. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Right, you can also do a control right click to take half of the stuff out of the box and it leaves half in there. Um, same thing if you do, you know, uh, control right click on the stack, it does exactly the same thing. Um, but clicking it from outside the box is just a little bit faster. That's all. Okay, let's clear a couple of these trees, let that coal build up just a teeny bit, and we're going to get some iron here in just one second. Now, I have started out with a couple of um, mods. All right, let's put this down here. There we go. We want that one to face there. Take the coal. 
All right, and we'll put half here. Again, control right click to put half and half in each one. Um, right, let's talk about the mods while this is making some iron for us here. Um, let me save the game. That's actually a really good idea right now. We'll call this, um, I don't know what we'll call this. We'll call this entry, entry uh, zero, zero. Right. And if we want to look at it, basically here are our mods. We've got Afraid of the Dark. This is basically just a light mod for YouTube viewing. A lot of people complain that it's too dark and it's very hard to get lamps in early game. As you can see, it's already getting dark out, um, but hopefully that'll help. We have Module Inserter, which is gonna come into play later in the game. This just basically helps us uh, insert modules into factories without the tedium of it. Um, the base mod is of course the base mod. Um, and Ghost Copier, is a wonderful mod. Thank you so very much, Distant Cam, for making this mod. I love it. When you put a blueprint down and then you place um, an assembler, it automatically assigns the recipe that is on the blueprint. Oh my God, it's good. And of course we have Upgrade Planner. Now all of these, if you're not familiar with these mods, these are quality of life mods. They do not change the recipes in any way. They do not make the game easier in any way. I would say they make the game less tedious like Upgrade Planner. Normally you would have to just literally uh, replace every single belt with the higher level belt, but Upgrade Planner makes it easy. Um, it uses belts from your inventory. It's not a free process. You have to have the actual items um, and it just allows them to be replaced fairly quickly. Okay, there we go. I know some people like to replace their own belts, but after playing dozens of factories, I'm kind of over it by this point. <laughs> so. That is my view on things. Right. Um, we need to get some stone. Wait, is there any stone? There's a bit of stone down there. Um, but what I'm really looking for is some big rocks. Oh, there's one over there. Okay, let's go get this rock. Oh, there's one here too. Is that a rock? I don't know. Oh, that's just like a little patch of stone. It looks awfully strange, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> I don't know what that is. There's some more. Are these new decorations that I didn't I wasn't aware of? Right, if you uh, chop one of these stones down with your pickaxe, which I forgot to tell you to make, there are here iron axe, it's in the second, it's in the production tab over here. Uh, you should always make this because it makes your mining a lot easier. But the big stones give you 20 stone each, which is a lot faster than actually um, digging up in a stone patch uh, for when you want to get the initial ingredients for stuff. So we're going to make all these stone furnaces and then we're going to make a couple of mining drills. Uh, and I think I'll pick up this chest. We're going to just recycle this chest for now. And we're going to just want to, how do we, all right, I want to put this out of the way so that when we get other stuff working, it's not in our way, right? We're going to just put one piece of wood in here. So if you notice these two burner miners, they are facing each other. The arrows go into each other. So basically this one generates coal, shoves it in this one, and this one starts going, that one generates coal, and they go around and they start building up coal. Um, and you can control click them to get the coal out. And it's a really very efficient little chain that you can do. You can have, I don't know, six, eight, ten, however many you want. Basically just daisy chaining together, and then you can grab the coal out and then put it in other machines that need them. Let's see, does this guy need coal yet? It has two, this one has four. I'm gonna shove this in here. This one seems to use coal at a faster rate. So again, um, that was, what did I do there? Was that control click or shift click? Let me just think. Okay, it is control click to just feed that. I'm also control clicking on this um, furnace to grab the iron plates from it. Right, so we want to get, I wanna get one more burner miner. Um, and then that one will feed into here. Oh, okay, that would help if I could put it properly. Right, again, control click on those guys. Right, there we go. Okay, so we also need more stone. I'm just gonna take these trees down from here because eventually this entire patch will need to be cleared. I actually have some fear in me. I'm like, whoa, where are the biters? <laughs> I don't know where they are. Um, I have not scouted this map. This is like fresh, fresh from the, uh, fresh from the generator. 
I'm playing this. I have not pre-scouted this map. I have no idea where the biters are going to be. But we do have a very large start area, and we have a fair amount of trees around us, which I'm going to take care not to delete all of, um, which is, it is quite difficult in early game because unless you have grenades, um, it's very slow going since you have to chop everything by hand. Um, right, let's go and get some more stuffs. I really need to make another miner to put on this stone. Where is... Just like looking for more of those rocks. All right, I don't see any, so we're just going to have to chop this stuff. I want to create a boiler. I think it's five stone. Not Yeah, we need a boiler to make a burner miner. And we're just going to put down a little chest there for that. There we go. And of course, this can have wood. I'm just going to feed it with half a stack of wood for now. You can use a variety of things for fuel for your burners. Um, you can use wood, coal, telephone poles, wooden chests, all kinds of things. <laughs> so it's, um, you know, you can burn a lot of stuff in there if you desire to do so. So let's go back down and get some stone. And just grab this out. We can even mine a little bit on our own. Let's get 10 stone. There we go. Um, and again, one miner and one uh, furnace. So if you make the furnace first and then the burner miner, basically the burner miner has a furnace as a component of it. So it's going to eat up your furnace. So that's why you always want to do the higher level thing first and then the furnace. So you have an extra furnace. Okay, there we go. You go here. Basically, these burner miners, they only affect um, the tiles they're, they're placed on. Later, we're going to get some things called electric mining drills, which have an extra tile around them. So they affect a greater area. Okay. Come on, stone. We need you. I really need to get more stone miners. Okay. I need to... I'll build two more stone miners, I think. Um, well, I'll just build a whole bunch of burner inserts because I could definitely use some more coal for coal ones, that's for sure. Because um, we don't have enough of those. And you can see I'm quickly moving my mouse over these guys. You know what? I'm going to move this stone thing up here. I don't know why I put it so, so low. Uh, we only want like three. I don't think we want four. Okay, let's put this box here and basically put in coal there and they'll fill up this box soon uh, a little bit faster than we were doing before. Okay, we need more boilers or more furnaces, pardon me. And again, um, put these in a line. I like to have about eight of these to start off with. Um, but yeah, we're getting really low on coal, so I'm thinking... The next of these are going to go to make coal a viable possibility. Okay, and the more of these things you have, the better production you're going to have of stuff. So uh, it's always good to make plenty of them. Let's make one, two, three, four more of these guys and then make the extra boilers ahead of time. So we just have some stockpiled. Um, not boilers, they're stone furnace. Obviously I have boilers on my mind, but they also use stone furnaces. So it's a really um, easy thing to, to stockpile on and use later. Okay, now the trick with these guys, getting them to go further is to just turn them around. So this one just needs to be turned around this way and life is okay. And there's these, the whole thing will daisy chain into itself uh, and it'll all get working. Okay, and life will be better for us. Okay, let's go down here. I can also start crafting boilers as well now that I'm doing this. So for a standard steam setup, we're going to need 20 boilers, um, but we can start off with 10 for now. By the way, if you want to craft more than one, you can, um, well, one crafting is pressing the left mouse button and to craft five, you can press the right mouse button. So as you see, I queued two sets of five there um, in the crafting menu just by clicking the right mouse button there. Okay, now we're starting to produce some decent coal here. Um, why am I not using the wood? Um, because I'm gonna get some power poles here shortly made. Uh, they're pretty important to get done because soon we shall have electricity and life will be better. Uh, right, so I need, I also need, let's see, I want a couple burners and a couple of furnaces 
for copper because we don't actually have any copper yet, but we're gonna need it very shortly uh, because we need uh, green circuits, which demands a lot of copper. Oh, whoops, wrong thing. Right. There we go. Okay, you guys can have that stuff. I need one more furnace. Basically, in the beginning of the game, you don't need that much copper. So we're just gonna put down two of these guys. And I think I forgot my coal, so let's walk over here. It really helps to have all these um, things close together. Um, there is an ability to use something called long reach, or there's a console command for it now, which is pretty handy. There's also uh, the picker mod, which I probably will install at endgame to, avo uh, to afford additional convenience to our playthrough. Uh, how many do we got? One, two, three, four, five. So I want eight. One, two, three. Okay, so that should be just enough for there. Um, but yeah, it's, it basically allows you to reach great distances. Um, and it's kind of a convenience mod, but I figured since I would like to explain things, I need to do things up close and personal. Uh, right, we need to get back here. Let's just keep on crafting these boilers in our inventory. It's nice to, every now and again, just queue some things up ahead of time so that uh, you have them ready to go and it's all good. Okay, there's stone. Alrighty, and we're gonna hop over and get some copper. Oh, nice, there we go. And now we can build, we're gonna need one offshore pump and then steam engines. So um, one boiler can actually fuel um, uh, two steam engines. Uh, so it's nice to have arrays of like one boiler plus two steam engines. That really, really works well. So I'm going to start crafting these guys. Um, it's going to take a lot of iron to make them craft, but... Oh, and there's another thing that I just did. I um, To craft nine of them, I just pressed shift click, and that basically crafts everything. Now, this icon is the upgrade builder and planner. We don't actually need that just yet. Um, we only need it once uh, we have things to replace, and that is not just yet now. So one, two, three, and again one two three okay i really need this coal okay nice and make another steam engine what else are we missing we're missing lots of iron plate okay that's fine we're, we'll get it we just started up some new iron maker thingies almost thinking about building a couple more of these but i really don't think that's a good idea um but it's okay, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Let's go down here and just grab the stone. I think these guys should be okay. What have we got in this one? Oh wow, they're really running out of coal there. Okay, this has 16, 15, and 14. We're kind of good on furnaces at this moment, but we are going to need a whole bunch very shortly. So let's just take these guys. We really want to get our power set up, up and running. Uh, I'll build these two. Wow, they are very expensive. They cost 31 iron each. Uh, let's see, I do want to also build some pipes. We want to build one pipe to ground and then a couple of, um, several pipes. And also some electric poles. Those are really very useful. There we go. Okay, grab this stuff from there. How are these doing? 21 coal. This one has one coal. So I'm a bit too far there. Okay, that's fine. It's okay, as long as we get something going on here. We may just have to leave our um, our other thing unfinished, but that's okay. We're, we're going to be fine. Right, so we have some basic materials here that we can work with and a little bit of iron in case we need to craft anything. So let's go up to our lake. For power generation, you are gonna need water. So make sure you do not um, totally make your map devoid of water. It's fairly important to have that. Uh, can I make some science packs? I almost can. I could start them anyway. Okay, and let's see, how do we want this to be laid out? 
there is a nice open spot right here. That looks lovely. I could put smelting here. Um, hmm. Or there's just, the only problem is there's like a million trees in the way of this. So I might have to do a, a tiny little smelting column and then just grenade this whole area. Um, right. So here we have this interesting looking, um, <laughs> Very funky looking place. This lake is a little bit out of place, but I think it should be okay. I think we'll start our boilers. We'll start them like right here, I think, just to get um, out of this. Like, yeah, we'll do this. Okay, this will be fine. This will be fine. Right. Um, now, it's very important that you line up the boilers specifically, right? So this is a boiler, and if you notice, it has two inlets for water on either end, and then one outlet for steam, and it's indicated by a little puff for the steam and a droplet for the water. You cannot connect the steam engines to the water, nor can you have pipes going around in crazy ways like this. That does not work, like, and do this. Because what's gonna happen is the water is going to block up the steam channel, um, and it just will not work very well. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yes, Eleonora. Oh, thank goodness she brought me a Tootsie Roll. It's this little toy that is wrapped kind of like a Tootsie Roll looks. Yes, my Eleonora. Hello. Okay. Good cat. Okay. I don't know what she's saying, but she's clearly wanting to say it. Right. So anyway, I just like to connect the steam engines directly to the steam thing, though you can have it go through a pipe if you want. Just make sure you keep the steam area separate from the water area. Uh, and to do this, we're just going to send a an underground pipe here and to the water. Here, we're going to put our, our pump. Make sure it's aligned fairly well. Uh, okay, here's our pipe. And there we go. And you can see water immediately filling the pipe. Now, um, pumps do not require electricity, thank the gods, uh, <laughs> because it could be very dismal if they did. All right, um, so now the other thing is they are blinking. Even if we put coal in here, it's gonna heat up. You see this smokestack running, the, the boiler's going, it's getting colored yellow, um, but these are still blinking. What's the deal? Well, they're not connected to anything. Um, and even if you connect them with power poles, they are gonna need to be connected to something like that draws electricity. So we're going to make a lab to do that for us. But before we do that, let's just go ahead and set up the rest of our um, boilers here. Okay, there we go. Okay, and I think we may have now I'm leaving space between these guys basically so I can put the power poles. If you have larger power poles, this may not matter at all because there are ones with larger coverage, but this is what we've got for now. So that's what we're gonna do for now. Right, so we have this. And if you have OCD or anything resembling that or just very specific tendencies, you can make sure and put your power poles in a nice square grid. If not, it really doesn't matter so long as they are all connected. Right, there we go. Um, let's connect these guys with pipe. And you can just run across there. And basically we have powered the very first one of these, but these have no power yet. Um, we're gonna need to have an automatic way of feeding these guys with some coal. Um, and we're gonna do that shortly. Oh, hello, there's a rock here. I didn't even notice that. But first we need iron. We need, we need items, we need actually copper. So if you see, I wanna make this lab, um, it shows at the bottom how, whoopsies, um, how much material I need for that. I need 36 iron plates and 15 copper plates. So let's go ahead and grab that. Okay, and I'm gonna get my anti-ghosting back on. I had to do other things. All right, there we go. And I wanna start making, oh, we'll make two labs. That sounds very reasonable to me. Okay, and then you guys. Yeah, there we go, nice. And grab some more of this. Um, we actually have plenty of stone at the moment. Uh, right, we need to get maybe, also we need 20 uh, red science packs to begin. 
So the first research is, um, I guess we can do it when we get our first labs because it is quite a striking thing when it happens. All right, let's get these guys moved along. And I also am going to want to basically get some coal up to that area for now um, so that we can automatically feed those boilers. Let's see. We need miners. So I think two miners should be enough for now. They are quite expensive to build. Okay, nice. And I also want to build millions and millions of belts. Uh, wait, I don't want to... Okay, to cancel things. Now, this is another thing. You can cancel by pressing shift, click. Um, uh, as you can see, I'm canceling them like this. You're canceling the whole stack. If you regular click on them without shift, you cancel one of the item. Uh, I had stacks of five, so I wanted to shift click and get rid of them um, because I wanted to actually make these burner inserters. Let me make 10 of them because I have 10 boilers so far, and then we can do our masses of belts. All right, great. So we have labs right now, and I'll put these guys here. Uh, right, so let's feed basically half these, uh, half of these into one lab and half into the other. Oh, and it didn't automatically pop up the research thing. That's okay. We'll press T and here we go. The first thing you want to research is automation. Very critical because it gives you the wonderful assembling machine one, uh, as well as a long handed inserter. So we're going to research this absolutely first. Um, and now we're going to, we're starting to get our little burner inserters. Um, for these guys here. Now, why do I use burner inserters um, to grab the coal? Well, if you use electric inserters, i.e. the yellow ones or above, um, when your power is starting to flag and go out, your inserters will also go out. So that's not a good situation to be in, obviously. So um, I always like to use burner inserters. They are fast enough um, for yellow belts and, uh, and to feed these boilers. I'm not sure if they're fast enough for red belts, uh, but that's okay. As long as you have, at the beginning of the game, you're going to have yellows anyway, and hopefully we'll be transitioning to a different form of power quite shortly. So let's go ahead and get this um, these belts dragged down to our, our coal supply, which is going to be down there. And while we're waiting on this, we can also just build some power lines. Pardon me. Okay. There we go. And right. Next thing I like to build is, um, well, I usually build lights because everybody wants them, but now we don't need them. Hooray. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, we could build, we are going to want to build some assemblers. So let's build like five, let's build 10 assemblers. Sounds like a reasonable amount for now. And we will also get this belt going down because we do need all that coal. It is quite a ways from the coal patch, but hopefully it'll be, it's going to be just fine. I think it's, it should be just fine. I am taking these trees down because I like it. I want it to be relatively straight as we get there. We'll see how the situation is at the actual coal mine. Okay. It's actually okay. It's not that far, not that many trees to chop. Yes. Tree chopping. The trees, as we know, are the greatest enemy in Factorio. Never mind about the biters. The biters are nothing compared to the trees. <laughs> it's a long-standing joke um, among Factorians. It is very important to realize this as well. Right, so we need actually more belts. I'm going to grab more coal for now because we need to feed these guys. Good. And, of course, grab all... Whoopsies. Uh, yep. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, there we can move now again. Yay! Hooray! Um, by, by the way, I am just dragging my mouse over. You hold the button down and drag. You don't actually have to click on each one of these little guys here. I think I'll also craft some more of these guys. Gonna need some. Oh, and I have no more stuff. But we have a bunch of stone in here, which is just fantastic. Now, what we can do is actually take this off, take this off, put an assembly machine here. Um, and then this can make stone furnaces for us. Okay. And I just need, well, I can give it some wood. Why not? 
don't really want 50 wood in there. But anyway, we will, we also need to connect this. If you have power poles, I'm going to go on the outside of these deposits for now because I don't know exactly where I want the power poles in them. Well, okay, we're going to go through this one. But that's all I tell you. <laughs> that's all. Uh, right. I think it would be great if we could just kind of maybe go here-ish. Oh, that's perfect. Look how that ended up. Okay. Get rid of this tree. Right, and move forward this way. So we're dragging the belts all the way back to the um, the power structure. Um, do we need anything else? We have a lot of stuff. I think we can afford to craft some more belts, afford to craft a bunch of furnaces as well. Um, oh yes, and we need to drag these power poles up here. So one cool thing that the game allows you to do is if you have a string of power poles, you can either click on this one and hold down and it will go as you're walking. Or you can place another one and then just keep the button clicked down and it will place them at maximum distance from each other, um, provided there are no obstacles. And if there are obstacles, it might choose to place the power pole a little bit closer. Um, like, for example, if you're running through a bunch of trees or something like that. So, and that's exactly what it did. Okay, we have logistics. And wow, did I craft too many science packs? I must have done. The other research must have been 10 and I thought it was, yeah, it's only 10 and I thought it was 20. Never mind. Uh, right, so we need a way to get these uh, science packs going. Let's check. Oh, we can't even use map mode because I don't have any radars. That's not good. All right, let's make a couple of radars. So radars are kind of wonderful because they, they basically, when you put one down, it starts scanning a very large area. So let's see, we've gotten one of them already. So we'll put this one here. And as you can see, it's this very large square and basically it's going to start scanning out um, into the wilderness and finding stuff for us. But it also gives us the advantage of having a map mode. So if you go to M, press M and you're in map mode, you can actually look and see uh, the ground far away from where you are. Uh, so we, I could have used this to check on is the coal patch working or not, but I didn't because I don't have a radar. But we're going to put a radar. Oh, here we go. Here's coal. Yay. Hooray. Look at this, how beautiful it is. All coming in lovely little pairs like coal going onto Noah's Ark uh, for the heating exchange system or to power the steamboat wheels or whatever. Uh, I don't know what Noah had. He might have had some cool darn stuff. Um, but anyway, if you grab the radar in your hand, you can see on the mini map where the coverage is. I love this feature. This is new in 0 0.15. So you can actually move it around to see where you want it placed. Now, each chunk has um, variable amounts of space where you can place these things. You see, I have to go quite far to get it to the next chunk over. But I'm going to basically place this where we have power. Um, I'm going to ghost place it with shift click and then walk down and actually place it because I don't have robots yet. But now we can see this entire area without actually having to walk. So I can see, aha, are my steam engines getting coal? Yes, they are. They are having a good time today. We can also check on the performance and available performance of these ones that are already fed. Now these guys have water, but they have no coal. So these guys have no performance available. All right, and you can see our radar scanning new chunks of, uh, of land out there. And this one will do the same in this direction. So hopefully we can have some stuff um, scanned before we uh, get anything else. Before we make big plans, we want to scan some of the stuff for sure. All right, let's grab some of these uh, items there and fuel these. And this line is reaching kind of the end of its useful usefulness. I think I would really like to put down here some a belt making machine. So if we look at belts, what do we need for belts? We need one iron plate and one iron gear wheel every half a second. And if we make iron gear wheels, yes, we need uh, two iron plates for every half a second. So basically we're going to want to put down um, multiple inserter or multiple boxes here and have inserters feeding these machines because I want belts made ASAP pronto. Okay, so here we go. We can have iron. Well, let's see how we want to do this. We can actually do it this way, maybe. No, that's not going to work either. Darn it. Okay, we could do it this way, though. 
Aha, there we go. So let's get a couple of inserters made as well. I'm gonna have belts be made here and we'll have gears over here. And they're always too slow for me, so. Oopsies, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so what I wanted to actually do is I wanted to put half of this, this stuff in here. So what I can do is to put half of my entire iron plates in there, I just control and right click and it puts exactly half in there. You see I have four stacks of 101 of 83, same there. And then here, again, control regular click to put those guys in there. Right, so we're gonna get this guy fed there, this one fed there. Same here and here, and we're going to put the gears in that way. And this will also, we need, um, actually, I probably should do that properly like this. Okay, there we go. So we have one box to take from the belts. There we go. And we'll power this all up. So what's going on in this situation here? Um, we have, this is being fe fed two iron plates at a time from this box and this box. Um, so hopefully it doesn't run out, but the inserters are not quite fast enough, but they're close enough. This one is transferring gears like mad, and then this guy is also getting iron plates from down here and from over here. So basically it's making iron, or uh, making plenty of belts. Uh, the recipe is making two at a time, so therefore we want to have two taking out, and as you can see these inserter arms are waving like crazy, they are not stopping for a second. Um, this one is putting on this square and this one's taking into the box. We could easily have a box here if we wanted to and take this one out, but then you'd kind of have to take from both boxes. So I'm just kind of like, okay, we'll just pass it to that one box there and I'll grab all the transport belts in there. So this is a really nice um, way to make basic, basic belts here. Uh, I would like to, you know what we also need? I want to bring those labs back down here because I don't want to ferry materials all the way up to the power area. Notice I am running on the belt because it's faster. And if you put concrete or stone brick underneath it, it'll be even faster. Yes, it makes a difference. It is crazy factorial physics, but it works that way. So, all right, let's go back down. Uh, we have our labs, our precious labs. They do take a while to create because they have green circuits in them. Um, and speaking of, we probably would need a green circuit maker as well. So we will, let's make one of those setups real quick. Uh, green circuits require uh, copper in them. So let's just make a, should I do a, I could do a, an, an okay setup like this, uh, like that. Actually, I could just do a simple one. Let's just do a simple setup and that'll be fine. All right, put them one apart. Now, um, as you see here, inserters can transfer between machines quite easily. So this is gonna be our, um, you know what, I'll put it the other way. I'll have the end products going to the right. This is gonna be green circuits and this is gonna be copper cables. Cause as you see, green circuits are made with iron plates and copper cables. Uh, they need three copper cables each. Um, and these guys produce uh, two every half a second. So this is not a correct ratio for this particular setup, but that's okay, we're, we're all right. Um, it's not as important as uh, the belts at the moment. Right, so let's put in our copper. And then here we're gonna need to grab some iron again from these machines to put in that particular um, from outside when you have something in your hand you can just multi-click it to transfer stacks or half stacks as well right so I want to have a maximum of two stacks of those green circuits for now okay and I should pick up the copper because as you see these machines are not running at all and this is pretty much our main use for copper here. All right, and I think we can, let's just plonk down our labs, or even better, get uh, get these guys kind of in a little, in a way that we want to, All right. Need to have this going there and that going there and more inserters. So when we make inserters, we need green circuits. So this is going to speed up the process of handcrafting quite quickly because what all we need to do is grab gears uh, or handcraft gears, I should say. 
Okay, so we're gonna make um, some red science in these things. There we go. And usually, and it's definitely fast enough to put in, um, have only one gear assembler for this. So I'm gonna do this. Uh, gears are made every half a second, and these guys are made every five seconds. So yeah, even just one box of stuff of iron feeding the gears should be enough. Okay, come on. Make stuff. Hurry. Uh, right. So we're going to have this one go here and here, and then this one also is going to go there. So what? Um, the other thing that's required by Red Science is copper plates. So that's this one right here. We're going to need copper plates in this chest. Um, and we're also going to put the iron in this chest, which I have run out of already. You see, we always run out of iron. It's a thing, but it's going to be okay. We're going to get it going. We have the belts to do it. Yes. Anyway. Uh, right. So we want to have this stuff here, put in plenty of iron and we need a box here for copper because this one's going to feed from this box and then we just say go and it should be just fine. So here they go. We're going to get some gears being made. There they go. This one is going to fill up to have two gears. Basically each machine holds enough to make two crafts of a product when you automatically feed it with inserters. I mean you can shove a whole bunch of stuff in here um, but the inserters will only um, produce two crafts worth. And now we have science going. This is cool. We're, it's, we're already automatic. So um, since this episode is getting a bit long, um, I think it's a good time to stop here. We have our tiny little starter base, but I think we can improve on that in the next episode. So thank you so very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.